And this week on the Gaelic Games front, the respective championships were made for the uh, four provinces. And uh, to take a look at those, and in particular, what is happening in Ulster and what we have to look forward to in Ulster. We've got uh, GA Pundit, former Donegal star forward, a man that's represented uh, Ireland, of course, in the international rules scene as well. Mr. Brendan Devaney, welcome back to, to Highland Radio. Good man, Oshin. I thought you were going to start with I was respected there. I was like, no, no, you're trying, to, you're trying to butter me up already. No? I'm, I'm, su- I'm surprised you're not doing this outside, Brendan, because you're a man that likes the sun and with the sun shining today, uh, I thought you might have been sitting out in the garden. No sunbeds at the minute, of course, Oshin, you know, so uh, you have to go the natural way. Well, listen, Brendan, it's all about championship uh, this week, and we now know that Donegal will be taking on down. And they are in the preliminary round. No doubt they're in the tougher side of the tougher half of the draw for Ulster this, this coming summer. So so first of all, what do you make of it? Down against Donegal? Yeah, as soon as we know, one Ulster, you know, the, nothing's taken for granted. Very much as we've seen going into the Ulster final last year when a team like Cavan, who somehow made it to the final and were, were such um, uh, uh, outside odds to even give Donegal a game, came through and won the game and, well, it kind of convincing on the day. So, you know, Declan Bonner, listen, Ashley, you wouldn't have wanted the preliminary round. Nobody does, particularly with a with a cram season coming up. You know, all the National League games, first and foremost, stay in Division 1 is, is always the, the, the first port of call. And then go into the championship in good form. But because Ulster is the way it is, Ashley, you can do without, you know, starting early. Now, Declan Bonner, of course, will, will never be using that as an excuse and, and will take on the challenge. But... Paddy Talley and down, you know, after he's served as wee band there for, for training when he shouldn't have been, um, they'll they'll come in and, and relish a shot at, at Donegal. And, and we've seen some of their play last year, Ash, and particularly in that Cavan game when, when they were nine points out, nine points up in the match, um, only for an amazing comeback by Cavan. It should have been down, was going into the Ulster final. So, you know, that's a spicy opening. And, and if we get over that, of course, you, you have our former boss, Rory Gallagher, coming back with his... Uh, 15 behind the ball men to, to, to try and uh, uh, take Donegal. And so there's lots of interest in there. I suppose Kevin, Kevin themselves with, with probably the worst draw, I think, they, they could have uh, uh, wished for uh, a way to Tyrone and Tyrone with new management and that. So a lot of interesting stuff uh, across the province, Ocean, but certainly Ulster is the, the only show in town, really, outside of an odd game in Connacht. You know, the Ulster Championship is, is the only provincial to look at. Yeah. Donegal now going into the league in the middle of May against Tyrone, Monaghan and Armagh. If they actually get to a league final, there's not much time to prep for Ulster after that because I think there's only a couple of weeks difference in it, in it, Brendan. So if Donegal are to be successful in the league and go to championship, the games are going to be coming thick and fast. Is that what you want or would you prefer, listen, secure your top flight status, don't worry about winning a league and then fully focus on this trip to Newry, which which could turn out to be a, a difficult and tricky one, Brendan? Yeah, exactly. Again, you know, should it happen that Donegal end up there, you know, Declan will always take the positives out of that, but certainly it's not something we need. And it's not something I think, Oshin, that could impact Donegal necessarily in Ulster, but were, were we to go on a run through Ulster, it's as the championship wears on that the other teams that have been able to hold back and really plan you know, against a, a couple of matches or maybe a tricky game if you're in if you're in Munster or, I mean, let's be honest, the dubs will just roll over everybody with their B or C team in, in Leinster. So for Donegal, that starting point is certainly wouldn't want to incur a, a league final. And like a lot of teams in Division 1, obviously the status is very important. One that now isn't, and it's just about trying to balance that rest and then up it for the championship. And we saw that a little time. That's that's difficult, uh, Oshin, and, and that's why the Ulster conundrum. I mean, it's a great championship. We all love it. Everybody wants to win in it. But it certainly does, I think, handicap teams, particularly a team that, that'll have to go through the preliminary round like, like we will have to. Yeah. Uh, as for Tyrone, uh, new management, of course, there under Fergal Logan and, and Brian Duher. Uh, a victory against Cavan would be some way to stamp your authority on, on your management of your of your own county uh, when you dethrone the defending champions in the, in the opening round. Yeah, Oshin, listen, I, I think any of us that's watching football around Ulster and club football and the, the whole tie-in of the top counties, there, there's no doubt for me Tyrone have the most talented squad uh, in Ulster. You know, I think if you looked at us going in that Ulster final last year, for example, with, with three half-forwards in our defence, you know, and, and, you know, light enough made-up ones at that, you look at the power and the strength of, of, of Tyrone, 
uh, and the players that they've, they've got at their availability. McShane coming back this year as well. You know, I mean, what, what a handful their, their forward line would be. I think from the tone's respect of talking to people in there, Oshin, all, all, all on the phone, customers and that. Now, of course, Peter Canavan was part of that great uh, trio that uh, along with uh, Duhur and Logan that, that had su that success at under-21 level. He opted not to go on, I think. That's probably taken a wee bit of the, 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 maybe the star quality away from it. I know everybody wanted Canavan involved. There was, there was talk of maybe because his son was playing in that, he didn't want to be influenced in anything. But that certainly is something to him people would have wanted. But that said, uh, Fergal Logan, you know, what a servant he's been to, to GA and, and, and to own. And of course, to her, I mean, one of their greatest ever servants. I, I'm sure they're going to get a big lift off that. You know, we thought for years, Oshin Hart's tactics and his, his overall look at things seemed to be holding to one back a small bit. You know, it was just too negative and too defensive for, for the talent that they have. And I, I can see this year Tyrone opening up and they're, they're definitely going to be a much more dangerous uh, prospect for me going into this championship. And I think as a Tyrone fan, after all the years of heart, even though it was so brilliant years on there, Oshin, there was a lot of question marks, particularly this last five, six, seven years. So I think that breath of fresh air will do Tyrone football the world good on the back of what was an unbelievable club championship for them. More pressure in Cavan this year since the holders defended champions. Can they can they pull it off again, can they? Ah, we Mickey Graham, you know, we'll be, ah, uh, sure, it's grand. <laughs> Mickey will take it, take it all uh, on his stride. I, I think, Oshin, the, 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 the buzz of Cavan from last year, I don't think Cavan people at all are, are how would I put this, not that they're, they're not that as worried. That that championship came so out of the blue. Number 40, of course, in that amazing history they have. They were sitting on 39 since since 97, Oshin, and no one could see a Cavan championship just coming anytime soon. They were one of those teams was just outside the bracket. You could never see them getting across the line. So it was amazing what happened. So I think that the 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 will that the good will that they've created in the county from last year is still hanging in there. And and I think most Cavan people will not be getting this championship expecting to beat Tyrone and they'll just be glad that they've, they've finally got that 40 mark Oshin, and, and hopefully they can be build, building on that. I can't see them now surviving Tyrone that first game but certainly they could go on a run in the, on, on the back door. Yeah. Uh, so then Donegal, Derry, Tyrone, Cavan and not forgetting down as well Brendan they're all in one side of the draw which uh, looks difficult enough. I'm sure Banty will be quite happy. Monaghan on the other side, Armagh, Antrim and, and Fermanagh to, to contend with. I did say earlier, maybe it's the easier side of the draw, but Armagh, of course, if they can find some form, they could give Monaghan trouble. Uh, Fermanagh and Antrim in there as well. Would Banty be happy that he's avoided the likes of Donegal and Tyrone? I would say so, uh, you know, You know the Banty, again, he, he came under the wrath of... Uh, of, of the training, um, getting caught out to uh, uh, training when we weren't supposed to. So I don't think that'll affect Monin any. Monin seemed to be at the minute in a funny place. Uh, Oshin, he just about survived in Division 1 last year. You know, uh, poor in the championship, um, going out to their neighbours, Cavan, and it just uh, didn't seem to happen for them. So I, I think that um, this is a big year for Monin. Unearthing new players is huge. Oshin, they've been working off the same core of players this last you know, um, seven to ten years, and the replacements don't seem to have come in. So, I think for the band this year on earth and some new talent is huge. And just looking at the throne influence around the the, the, the province, and then that side of the draw, they end up beginly obviously taking over Antrim, and and Ricey with Fermanagh. So you know that's going to add a bit of spice to that as well. And um, we all know Wendy was was a uh, was a constant contributor there to the DL debate last year, and that. And, uh, I know Wendell quite well, very studious, you know, he's managed various club teams around Ulster and that, so big move going into county management for him, for Matt Antrim of course right down Division 4, the only way is up really um, for them, Oshin, that's work in progress for him, but Armagh, a huge year for Armagh, and the Division 4 won, four, four Ulster teams in Division 1, Oshin, which again, going back to what we were talking about earlier, you know, the other provinces, that's just not going to happen. Throwing, you know, Donegal, Monaghan and, and Armagh, all in Division 1. And, of course, the way Donegal Armagh uh, dismantled Armagh in last year's semi-final really, um, I think, knocked McGinney and his, his squad back, you know, and probably gave us a false sense going into the Ulster final. Going back to that old cliche, don't, be, don't, don't base a team in its last performance because I think that they, whatever Armagh's tactics or whatever their plan was, was was obliterated in the first half. So for McGinney going into this this year again, it's very different for for Armagh looking into the championship then because 
if they take a pasting in, 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 the, in the division and think that they can't hack it, it's going to knock their confidence, which is already going to be knocked after that defeat they took in Brethany uh, at our hands. So I think for them, going on, they'll just be thinking uh, league now, try, try and win their home games, try and stay in Division 1 and consolidate because it's taken them some time to get back, Oshin. I still don't see them after what we've seen last year being that force that's, that's ready to topple the likes of a, 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 a Monaghan, a, a Tyrone or, or a Donegal. But so I think their their status really and their their game plan this year will be to stay in Division One first and foremost. Who's going to win Ulster, Brendan? I know we're a long way out from it, and we haven't seen any football yet. But um, <laughs> with the draw done, and we have to we have to ask you, who do you think is going to be the winners of the Anglo Celt? Can Donegal regain it? Are Tyrone going to get it under new management, or is Gavin going to be the boys that's celebrating in blue again? That's not a Cavan top, by the way you're wearing, is it? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's a wee freebie. Somebody said, "Be out, guys." Um, <laughs> I know he's going to win. It's getting too tight for me in the lockdown. Hey, it's not because <laughs> I'm, I'm working out. Hey, I'm putting on the beef. Um, Austin, do you know what? You'd have to say Tyrone are favourites, uh, and I'll, I'll simply because of McShenna, uh, McKenna, and, and McShane. If those two guys are back and firing, and we've seen the ability of McKenna last year in, in, in pieces, Austin. The two guys are nearly unmarkable now. They, they close down one of them in any given game, you're, you're doing well. The fact that Toronto are going to have the, both of them players at their disposal, they're going to get a, 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 a lift off the new management going in there, as any team would after after such a long period of Mickey Hart. The two two lads are well respected. I think Toronto are the dangerous side. And for Donegal, Oshin, the story is with Donegal is if we have our, our, our best 15 fit, we can beat anybody. And I think we can have the number over Toronto. Should we pick up a few injuries, you think of particularly likes of like a Stephen McMenamin uh, last year getting injured. And, you know, as I say, we went into that that uh, Ulster final with, with three half backs in defence, and that that thrown forward line would 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 do some damage against Donegal unless we have all our main men in there and and they're injury free. We can give anybody a game. That's why you would have to say, Oshin, squad on squad, uh, thrown good on this this year Ulster championship would be the favourites. Okay then, Brendan, we'll uh, quickly move out of Ulster and into Leinster. Listen, we know Dublin, they're going for, for yet another All-Ireland. They'll start in the quarterfinals. You would expect them to win a, an 11th uh, Leinster title in, in a row. Uh, but the game we're going to focus on, and the one that has interest, of course, from the region up here up north, involves Mickey Hart. Louth against Offley. There'll be a lot of eyes on that tie to see what Mickey Hart's going to do with the Louth boys this championship. Yeah, I, should, I mean, Leinster, listen, we call it the Dublin Championship, really. Um, I mean, we're, we're close to calling All-Ireland that, such as the domination. So I think when, it, when this draw comes out for Leinster, it's all, uh, Leinster, it's all about where, where are Dublin on it and, and where can we avoid them to? And teams that are on the, the opposite side want to make it to a final then that is the best you can hope for. And for Mickey Hart, such a different scenario, Washington. You know, he came through there with, with underage, one in All-Ireland teams at Tyrone. Took a Tyrone team that already was a top flight team, brought through the raft of the Umphalas and really changed the game in many ways. And, you know, three All Irelands and, and a host of other titles and, and playing some brilliant football. This is a very different scenario, you know. Louth Division 4, um, you know, getting against Offaly, the winners play Kildare. Um, so for him, I think the big push again is going back to get out of Division 4, um, hopefully beat Offaly. Would they have enough to beat Kildare? I very much doubt it. So it's work in progress. And again, going back to the, the Talton Cup, uh, Oshin, and, and looking at the second tier competition when it is in place, hopefully by next season, that surely a team like, like Louth and Mickey Hart would, would love to win Championship Silverware, a second tier competition. That has to be the aim of, of sides like that. So for Hart, the only way is up. It's a bit like Enda McGinley. And again, the Tyrone influence, Oshin, is, is all over. The two, the two lads will be locking horns in the National Football League. Yeah. Tipperary are monster champions, and uh, they've been drawn in the side with Clare and Kerry. They beat Cork, of course, last year in the final. To win that title, uh, surprisingly, it's a case, something similar to, to what happened in Ulster. Can Tipperary overcome the kingdom and then possibly beat the likes of Cork again to claim uh, the uh, to claim the monster title? It's going to be harder for them to do this year. Definitely. I mean, it's a bit like the Cavan scenario, uh, Oshin. Um, lightning striking. Um, I just, no one's seen that. Oshin, the crazy thing is that the, the Tip and Cavan are, are going to be Munster and Ulster holders playing in Division 3 this year. 
I would wonder has that ever happened before, and particularly Oshin, it might have happened years ago when teams weren't that worried about the league or some kind of freak season. But the way things are now, Oshin, we thought that the, the 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 bigger teams, the better squads in the country, because of tactics and the systematic play of football, the lower teams could never jump over it. You know, they they might win an odd game, but the one that prevents a title. We thought that nearly couldn't happen anymore. You know, you think Ulster the last 10 years, it's been Donegal five titles, Tyrone three, Monaghan two, and then out of nowhere, this Cavan won, and in the same year, Tip won it as well. So I can't see that happening. I think Peter Keane, will, you know, he was caught with that sucker points that goal against Cork last year. You know, everybody was looking at Cork, then we're finally going to win a monster, and, and, and Tip came and took them out. So it was great for football, I think, Oshin, and 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 it gives a lot of teams aspirations and that. And just looking at Cork, Oshin, they have to play the winners of Limerick or Waterford to be in a Munster final. And like, I'm not going back to the Ulster thing, you know, not, we're not complaining about this. We have a brilliant championship, but just as the season goes on, there's Cork, you know, let's say they were making designs on, on later in the season. They can wait until the winners of Waterford and Limerick, then they have a, a, a Munster final if, if they get over that. It's, it's such a different way to plan your season. Yeah. Well, Cork won a win in All-Ireland. They can win the provincial in two games, and then to make the final, they have to play another two games. But you weigh that up with Donegal. If Donegal are going to win, win Ulster, they have to play four matches, and then another two then before they get to, to an All Ireland final. So, yeah, with well, the only county that it happens in, Brendan, um, mm. that will have such a tough route to get to to, to an All Ireland. I suppose when an Ulster club wins it, when they do win the Sam Maguire, it's seen as some would say it has possibly been a bigger achievement than the than the rest of the the, the counties in the country. Yeah, yeah, and it goes back to that thing I said about disbanding provincials and that, you know, it's it's not one of those things that anyone in Ulster wants to see, but if you're looking at potential All-Ireland contenders, that's that's certainly, as you say, is, is yeah. makes things so much so much more difficult. Finally, we'll go to Connacht. What did you make of it? Uh, Mayo against Sligo, and then Leitrim, if they get through it, while Galway, to make the final, are going to play Ross Common in a battle of, of former champions. Is it yeah, well, the, the, the draw itself created a small bit of controversy when, when there seemed to be, did you see the, the, the video circle where some guys seemed to drop one of the balls and pick another one? And I think, what are you suggesting, Brendan? Here? I, 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 nothing, it was just, it <laughs> might, might have slipped out of his hand. It was funny because I think in lockdown at the minute, actually, between conspiracy theories and like a GA stories, this was seemed to be big news. But uh, I was just wondering who exactly this is all helping, you know, because at the end of the day, we, we have, you know, you've, if you have two, the two Connacht Division One teams are, are playing each other, and that that should that's the only Division One all Division One class to, to get us going, and 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 that should that should be spicy as well. You know, people are looking at Mayo again. We keep wondering with the Mayo conundrum. People are saying they the only side that maybe can put it up to Dublin all the, all the time. So we keep wondering where they are, and and they keep coming back as well. Ashen. So Connacht's been another championship outside of our own where there's been a small bit of intrigue because. You have basically three sides that can win it, so it does create a, a, a bit of interest. Uh, uh, Ocean. So certainly, say Gal Galway and Ross Common. That's probably the the highlight. I think most people would think of, of the first rounds, and you know, I think Donegal Down is a potential to be a cracking game as well. Okay, well, so Brendan, thanks uh, for joining us, and uh, of Sorry, course, looking forward to the championship, which is due to start at the at the end of June. But we've got the league action up and running in the middle of uh, May before we get as far as the uh, the provincial championships and silverware up for grabs. All right, cheers, Brendan. See you. All the best.